With the fall of the Mycenaean Empire, the age-old might and culture of an ancient Greece collapsed, and Hellas was mirrored in chaos and ruin. This period became a time that no chronicle would document. Amid disarray and death, a handful of chosen ones sought to restore law and order by assuming control over the fallen land. History would remember them as heroes, but the lure of power soon stoked their ambitions. Between the chosen ones, a great war began and its victor would become the sole ruler. Drawn to the war, mysterious and technologically advanced beings arrived in this world. They offered their support to the heroes, arming them with advanced weaponry of terrible power, and the Greeks soon came to worship them as gods. Can you survive in this hostile land ravaged by monsters and unending strife? Are you ready to fight and become Lord of Hellas? In Lords of Hellas, you lead a hero to battle. With armies at their command, they must fight rival heroes and slay fearsome monsters as they try to please the new gods. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel about board games and board gamey things and we are here to do something special. It's just me, no Jamie, she's in the background. Hi! <laughs> That's Jamie's hand, love to see it. Today we're going to do something a little bit different as I mentioned. I did something similar in the past where I unboxed Tainted Grail and the Age of Legends and the Last Night campaign from Awaken Realms. I've mentioned a bunch of times on this channel that Awaken Realms is, I would say at this point, definitely my favorite publisher. I just, I love their game content. Their themes always resonate with me. The type of games that they tend to produce also resonate with me. Dungeon crawlers, area control, big box games. Kind of decided that once every couple of months, I'm actually going to do a game spotlight, a game highlight of an Awaken Realms game. And I will mention that in this instance, Lord of Hellas was sent to me by Awaken Realms to do this content. So thank you to them for that. And we're just going to kind of chat about this game. Let's get into it. Lords of Hellas is, as mentioned, produced by Awaken Realms, designed and developed by Adam Kwapinski and Marcin Swearcott. Lords of Hellas is Brass Tacks, a area control action selection-esque game. Think of it in the same vein as Rising Sun, Blood Rage, any of those kind of dudes on a map-esque games. I think where Lords of Hellas kind of veers off a little bit is that there's multiple paths to victory. In a three plus player game, victory is achieved by one of three things. One, you can defeat three monsters. Another is to control two lands. The third way to achieve victory in this game is to control a monument for three consecutive rounds. These big boys that you see in front of me actually come in pieces, in four separate pieces plus a base, which is five separate pieces. And in the game, you can take an action, which is basically to build a monument. And what you do is add to said monument until it's completed. And if you control that monument, that completed monument for three consecutive rounds, you win the game. It's pretty cool that you can kind of tread your own path, I guess, to figure out how exactly you want to achieve victory. Now, I will mention in a two player game, it's a bit different. There's a variant where, in order to win, you have to defeat three monsters or control three lands as opposed to two. And you cannot achieve victory by completing and controlling a monument for three consecutive rounds. So, that's the bit of a different variant for two players. And I will mention Jamie and I have only played this so far at two players. And I will caveat all this with, I do believe that this would play best at three plus. The two variants fine, but what I would say is in most of these games, the two player variant is just a bit lackluster because there's just not enough people on the map in order to kind of have to force conflict and that sort of thing. You can kind of go off and do your own thing and not have to intertwine with uh, the other player quite as much. So I'm going to chat quickly about the components in this game. As you'll notice, I've painted the miniatures. The minis in this game are phenomenal. Just like in most Awaken Realms games that I've played, they definitely knock it out of the park. And I'll mention, so there's kind of three different types here. These little figures are the play, the players you control, the heroes you control. You can play as Heracles, Achilles, Helen, or Perseus. They've kind of like intertwined the Greek mythos with like a bionic-esque twist. You know, you have your Greek gods, but they all have like, I mean, Zeus here has like this crazy electric sword thing that he's holding. You have your players that you play as, and then you have mini bosses that are all over the map. So this is Cyclops and 
This is Hydra. There's just a bunch of mini bosses that are all over the map. And these would be, so if you defeat three of these, you win the game. And then you have your big statues. So Zeus, Athena, Hermes. So I kind of painted these with the idea that they're they're meant to be statues. So I kind of just dusted these over with gold. This one's bronze. And then I did Athena a little bit more black with kind of a rust effect. Component wise are great. You have awesome miniatures. The board is awesome. It looks great on, on the table. One thing I'll mention about the components that I've mentioned in other videos, it doesn't have recessed boards. It is an issue in this game as well. Probably the only thing so far that I've come across in this game that I would say is a negative, but there's just a lot of games that don't do that well, in my opinion. We've played this a few times now, and I think in every instance we've enjoyed it. I don't know where it falls in that spectrum of Rising Sun, Blood Rage, and that sort of thing yet, because I just haven't played enough to really make that call. And again, I want to play it at its primary player count, which would be three plus. Rulebook is a bit of a struggle, and that's probably a me problem. I I think Jamie was fine with it, but I just don't read rule books super well. And unless it's like clear, concise, I struggle with it. So it's probably more so a me thing than, than an Awakened Realms thing. However, in saying that, there is a linked video to learn how to play this game in the rule book. And that video we did watch and it is very good. The one thing I, I will say, if you're a painter like I am, for some reason, I don't know why this is, I don't know if it's the resin or the plastic they use to create these miniatures, but I cannot get paint, contrast paint to adhere to it. I prime them with gray sear, and then I tried one with wraith bone because the gray sear wasn't accepting the paint. So I thought maybe I had a bad can of gray sear, and then I tried wraith bone and it did the exact same thing and I've used that can of wraith bone on other miniatures with no problem. So I'm not sure if it's just the plastic type or whatever, but if you do buy this game and you do paint, just be mindful of that. In terms of gameplay, it's very much, again, dudes on a map. So you're, you're placing your character on this expansive map that has big monuments on it. You can build temples, you're moving troops around. So you're basically controlling an army and it's area majority, area movement, area control-esque. So you're trying to take over new territories, keep other people out from territories, building temples, upgrading monuments, and moving your hero around the board to either try to fight the bosses. In the game, you can use your guy to go on a hunt, and that means to actually battle. So these guys are on the map in certain places and they can move around a little bit. And one of your actions is actually to go on a hunt. So when you go on a hunt, all of these characters have an associated player or boss card or whatever you want to call it with different sections of their body that you have to wound in order to complete the hunt. And it's a really cool mechanic. It's very difficult. It can carry over. So if you go on a hunt and do say three different body part damages to Cyclops, for example, and then eventually you deplete yourself and you can't complete the hunt, that damage stays on Cyclops and another person can actually come in with their hero and then complete the hunt on top of that and pretty much wipe out all, all of the action you had done prior. So another cool thing in this game is certain areas have a quest associated with it, a quest token. So when you go with your hero to a certain area that has a quest token on it, you can actually complete that quest. So you would take your hero off the board and place it on the quest that you have up at the top. So there's three quests at the top of the board. Depending on how powerful you are to start, you'd either start on the first, second, or third slot, and when you get to the third slot, you complete the quest. I just thought it was a cool mechanic. It gives you some bonuses to upgrade your dude and, and that sort of thing. And another thing I haven't mentioned that I really like, I'm really getting in tune with my love for asymmetry in games. I wouldn't say necessarily that this is an asymmetrical game like say root or vast to that degree but it does have asymmetrical player powers so each one of those characters that i mentioned perseus helen Her heracles or achilles they all have kind of unique abilities that allow them to do certain things on their turn which is pretty cool i love the theme I took classics in university. I don't know if it's called that elsewhere, but I did take a lot of Greek and Roman mythology courses when I was in university. So that theme is always going to resonate with me. And I really, really enjoyed the twist, like the mechanical, bionicle, whatever you want to call it, twist that they've added to this theme. Overly enjoyable. Again, I love Awaken Realms games. This is one that I can see our gaming group playing a ton of because I know that I love this type of game. I love area majority, you know, dudes on a map s games and i know jason also does and i don't know how much jamie likes it but i think she enjoyed her playthroughs of this she's nodding at me so that's a yes 
I kind of want to sign this off with the fact that upcoming Awaken Realms has Lords of Ragnarok, which actually is going to be releasing October 21st. So just a few days from now. I haven't done a ton of research on it, so I apologize, but I'm super excited for that. If you've played Lords of Hellas, and feel like I do, I feel like you should definitely check out Lords of Ragnarok. I think it's going to be a great game. And again, if you're interested in Tainted Grail, I do have an unboxing of Tainted Grail that you can check out. Maybe we'll link it down below or whatever Jamie does with her editing magic so you can find that easily. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to shoot a comment. I'll answer any and all that I can. If you're looking for any games like Lords of Hellas, what better place to find it than your friendly local gaming store for us here in Halifax, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. And we will pop that here and we'll have it down below in that special section that Jamie influences with all their crazy nonsense. What else do I say? That's it for me for today. Thank you for being here again. I'm stumbling through this. It's not easy to be alone on camera to have someone to bounce things off with. I'm right here. Thank you so much for being here. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say later days. Later days. Boo! Damn it. I think you did good. Thank you. Boo! Oh, don't scare me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>